Be the program is a uh, national uh, program about healthy relationships and preventing teen dating violence uh, that supports youth, equips youth to influence their peers to make positive decisions about healthy relationships. And so that includes um, providing a curriculum to support youth to discuss their own relationships and unpack what makes a relationship healthy or unhealthy and uh, learning about red flags, green flags in relationships so they can see sort of how relationships are evolving and notice that a relationship is going down a negative path. Following this, they explore how to engage their peers in conversation, how to really listen to them to identify when those red flags pop up and have conversations with them that support them to explore their own relationships and come to conclusions and make decisions themselves about addressing their own relationships. So it's not intended to be like a teacher-student relationship among peers. It's intended to be uh, one peer encouraging another to think critically about their own decisions uh, that they're making in their lives about their relationships. So I think one thing we learned was that uh, having flexibility in the delivery of the of the different modules in our program uh, became really important. So adapting some of the in-person lessons to online lessons using tools like Miro, uh, Mentimeter, different ways to engage while, while online were very important. Also realizing that some of our sessions, the length and the duration kind of needed to be shortened sometimes in order to keep uh, young people's attention. So if some of the sessions were maybe an hour and a half, dividing that into two 45 minute sessions seemed to lead to some better engagement as well. And then I think lastly, was just really understanding how some young people approach relationships, the validity and understanding uh, how valid some of the online relationships are for young people. That was very surprising for me because, you know, a lot of our workshops and a lot of our talk had kind of assumed that relationships would be in person. So exploring how healthy relationships look online was something that was really neat to see as we did the, the program delivery. Over the course of five years, we reached about 1,700 youth directly, more through social media campaigns in school, educational sessions, things like that. And we worked with, depending on the year, eight to 15 sites across the country. And what really surfaced was, um, number one, the need for spaces for young people to talk about relationships, both with their peers and also with trusting adults. And in particular, to have those have conversations that fall outside of the scope of what they would tackle in school, which sort of in the best case scenario tends to be very physiological, biological, versus say having actual conversations about relationships and about the emotions, the communication, all the pieces that really underlie what makes a relationship healthy or not healthy. A lot of young people shared that this that this space was the only space where they could talk about relationships and that they learned um, a lot in particular about like the red flags and the green flags, what they should be looking for in a relationship, and then how to have conversations about those flags with their peers. A big piece of feedback from facilitators was how important it was to allow youth to guide the conversation, to stay in the spaces that they needed to stay in um, and to move to other spaces when needed. So to, to keep a conversation going for multiple sessions, if that's what it took, and that that ability to be responsive uh, really, really benefited the young people in the space. And then the last thing that I wanted to add was just that there was a couple of youth who noted that it was really positive for them to have a space where they could actually talk openly about queer relationships because that's not something that they were always getting or usually getting in their traditional like sex ed classes at school. So it was nice that this program didn't take a particular, like it wasn't a super heteronormative curriculum. So the conversations flowed in a way that allowed them to explore what it means to date as a queer person as well. member of the community of practice was really valuable um, in terms of learning from one another about 
uh, shared challenges, uh, strategies to overcome barriers to engagement. We learned a lot about working with schools, what schools were looking for in terms of how to get into classrooms, et cetera. Building relationships across projects was, was really helpful in terms of just knowing that there were other people out there doing the work, that there was a shared sort of mission. Uh, and we were all working towards it a little differently, but that there was, um, there was sort of that camaraderie. Uh, and I, I really appreciated having that. And actually a lot of what came through I, in the initial pieces was really talking about the research and evaluation, because that was a big task undertaking the, the research piece of it and creating a research plan and having the tools. And I know that PrevNet and, and the Public Health Agency of Canada were like, here are some tools you can use and here are some approaches. And, and those, those evaluation pieces were actually really, really helpful in terms of setting it up.